Hey, so the other day I was browsing YouTube and I came across this video by Jonas Troiler. I'll put his link in the description. He came across like five different reasons why indie platformer games usually suck. And I, I have to say I completely agree with him. He's being a little bit like aggressive, but you know, he's right. At the same time though, I think his video is incredibly useful, but the only problem is that it uses Unity and not Godot, so I just wanted to apply the techniques he mentioned in the video to Godot, but I'm only going to focus on jump controls, I'm not going to focus on like acceleration or anything, and movement, that's what he also talked about in the video, so if you want to see that, just watch his video, I have it in the description. So I've already applied this to my first person shooter, but today I'll go over it in 2D. But right now I'll just show you the uh, after it's done. So uh, if you just barely press space, I'll show you right here, it'll uh, do like a little half jump or a small jump, whatever like a little variable you want to say it as. And if you hold down space then you'll do a long jump or a high jump. And yeah, so it's basically a variable jump height. That's what I would call it. It's such a simple thing. And uh, also I have it to where if you jump and you're about to land, if you press space when you're about to land, you'll still jump. So it doesn't matter if you press space at the wrong time, you'll still jump and stuff. You'll just do like a little hop afterwards. See, as you can see, I'm hitting space. Before I jump, land, I press space and it still jumps. The next one is a ledge jump. So basically, uh, whenever you're on the ground, a uh, timer is going off every time you're on the ground. And then, uh, so if you run off a ledge, which I'm about to do right now, then your the timer will still be active for a little bit and then uh, your jump will still count even though you're slightly off the ledge which isn't very realistic but it feels 10 times better i'll be showcasing all these fixes in 2d today and uh but the code's basically the same for both 3d and 2d it's just the same concept you're moving the velocity.y in the 3d code and you're moving the velocity.y in the 2d code since this code mostly has to do with platformers, I'll be using a 2D game, and I made like a little section of a level just to exemplify all the ch uh, changes I've made. And as of now, the character does not have all the code that I had in the 3D game, where you're able to do that little half jump, the ledge jump, or have the jump buffer in there. Or the jump buffer is basically when you're jumping when you're about to land, and it still jumps. Yeah. I'll show you how similar the 2D and the 3D code is after I'm done with the 2D section of the video. So when the jump code isn't implemented, it feels terrible to jump because uh, when you f uh, fall off a ledge, you just your character just falls off the ledge. You don't even if you press the space button. And when you're about to land, your character won't jump if you press the space button before you land. And I'm going to fix that using timers. So you need to be able to create a timer for this, and usually the way you do it is that you create a timer, but I made a little tiny class that kind of creates a timer for you, but I'll go through the functions with you just in case you want to know how to make a timer the same way I'm doing it. So in my code I have an array of bools, but you don't need that, you only need one boolean and a timer. So right here, I just like resize it, just make a, like make them all like, make the first one false and make the rest true. And then I just like create a new timer. So in the create new timer function, I just create a new timer. I set the one shot to true. I set the wait time. And then I set connect the timeout signal to a function and pass in the array of bools. But in your code, you probably only need to pass in one boolean. Like, uh, wait, well, I'll go down to the display. Uh, yeah, display timer right there. And uh, you could just literally set it to bool or something like that. Bool. <laughs> but yeah, right here I just set it to array with spot can equals to true. So yeah. So that's all that um, the timeout uh, signal will really activate, is just make the boolean true. So I made my new timer, I'm going to set the time to 0 0.2 seconds when uh, when it starts, and uh, and I'm going to add it as a child to my class. With my class, this is how you get the timer of the class, you say get frame timer. So right now I have a hard code in with this key space and is key pressed, and I'm going to take this uh, boolean check, this boolean variable out, and I'm just going to switch it with the jump timer dot start time. So basically what the start time function does is just sets my main boolean variable to false, and it starts the timer. So that's pretty much it. So I've skipped forward a little bit, but I forgot to show this little check right here. That put, uh, it's a not jump timer, uh, dot get frame timers, because like uh, whenever uh, the timer has started, the bool variable will be set to false. So you want to check if it's false if the timer hasn't reached the next interval yet, basically, if it hasn't reached the timeout signal yet. So whenever the timeout signal has not been reached, you'll be able to jump. 
So right now the jump timer is working, so even if I press space right before I land, he'll still jump. Now I'll make what I call a grounded timer, and I'll set it to the same time as I did the jump timer. Now I'm going to take off the Islam floor check for when you're jumping. I'm going to split it off into a separate check. And uh, basically what will happen is that, that if your character's on the floor, then the grounded timer will start. Similarly to the jump timer code, we're going to add the not ground timer dot uh, get frame timers. And then we'll get our main boolean variable and check if it's not true. And now he could jump off ledges just fine. I'll test it out right now. Let me see. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you like fall off a little bit. See? But now if you wait too long, it doesn't jump. But yeah. So those two things already make the game feel so much better. I also need to have another check, which is I forgot exactly how I did it. Oh, that's because it gets triggered twice in that time frame. So I need to have a has jump type of thing as well. So the player has jumped twice because we never checked if the player has already jumped once before the timeout has been reached. So right here I'll add a variable called has jumped and set it to false. And this will check if we're gonna, uh, th this will make sure we can only jump once per interval basically. And uh, down here, if the player has reached the floor and we're, uh, we've already reached the timeout signal, then the has jumped will be equal to false. Because we don't want the player to be able to jump twice in midair. Well, unless you want to make that an option, but in my game, or in this game, we're not going to allow that. So yeah. So right here, up here, like once a player has jumped, then has jumped will be equal to true. And uh, in the check, just check if uh, has jumped is false, basically not has jumped, and then that'll be fine. And I'm going to copy some code over real quick. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm resetting the timers once we have jumped. So we don't, like we don't want the timers to keep going even after we've already jumped. We want them to stop and reset. So I'll run the game, and right now uh, all the code's working, and it feels much better to just jump around, but I still don't have that variable height jump. So here's the main section of code that controls variable height, just right here, just these three lines. Those are the main pieces. But uh, basically, you want to make a jump button. So uh, I use this one called like event is action released. So if they release the jump button, then as soon as they release it, you want to check if the player is still going up. In the 2D realm, that means that velocity y will be negative. So as soon as uh, both of those are true, then uh, it, velocity uh, dot y will be times by this cut height right here. So the cut height is 0 0.5, so basically it's divided by 2. So it's getting halved as soon as the player releases the jump button. And uh, yeah, what this will do, or this will like allow, is that if the player holds down the jump button the whole time, they will keep, they'll only be forced down by gravity. But if, if they, um, if they like barely press the jump button, then they will, um, like, uh, this, this function or this little thing will be called and, uh, all this will be true and then they'll get halved right away. They'll get halved way faster. So like as soon as you let go of the space button, you're going to be halved. So you're both fine that, so it's almost a downward force in a way except it's just halving the jump force you have so yeah so like as soon as you let go you're not going to, you're not going this high and uh, I just have this little check just to make sure the player can't hold down space so basically uh, if the player releases the jump button then jump button held is false or but if they keep um if they haven't released it you won't be able to jump again so you have to release it to be able to jump so I just wanted to do that so the player just can't just keep holding down space. It feels like you're more into it when you have to keep pressing the button. But I don't know. That's just my, my philosophy. But right here, as you can see, if I'm holding down space, I do a big old jump. If I just press space, I do a smaller jump. But yeah, you can make it as small as you want. So like this little cut height right here, I'll set it to like 0 0.1 just to show you. And he will jump a little bit less right there. See? It almost feels like you're getting forced down by something. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So that's like almost like, that's like a third of the height right there. Even though I'm at 0 0.1. But yeah, you can set to any value you want. Whichever value you like the wor the best, use it. So I like 0 0.5 the best, so that's just the one I use. So just know that if you're trying to apply this to 3D, literally all you gotta do is just switch all the, uh, 
you know, all the velocity stuff just to, like, basically vector threes, and that's pretty much it. But all the timer stuff, no matter if you're making a 3D or a 2D game, it'll still be the same, like with the grounded timer and the jump timer. They're both going to be exactly the same if you make it in a 3D game. But yeah, I hope this helped, and uh, I'll just, like, show it to you one more time. Boom, 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 zoom. Like the high jump, just remember, make a high jump. Like where they could jump uh, variable, like if you're making a platformer. And then like if they run off the ledge, you want to be able to like jump a little bit to make the jump, to make it feel like more um, precise when you're playing. And like if they, even if they haven't reached the ground right away, you want them to be able to jump even if they press the space button. So all this is just to make sure that if you press a button, you are going to jump unless you are way late on the timing. So the timing is a little bit more forgiving. It makes you feel like you're more in control that like every time you die, like, let's say if you fall off this ledge, that's my fault. That's not the game's fault. But yeah. Okay, well, I hope you all have a great night. Look at my mole fucking Y velocity. It's going nuts. Damn. It's at 45,000. I wonder how fast that is. How many levels I'm passing. Yeah. It just only gets faster. Well, have a great night.